Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about graphing simple rational functions. All right, let's get started. Some rational function terminology. The rational function has the form f of x is equal to some function of x over another function of x. So f of x is equal to p of x divided by q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomials, and q of x cannot be equal to 0. So why can't q of x be equal to 0? Well, we remember that we cannot have a 0 as the denominator. Otherwise, the value of the function is going to be undefined. All right. so let's, let's start with, I tell my uh, kids, let's start with a single before we get into doubles, triples, and home runs. So we're going to start with an inverse variation function, which is a rational function in the form f of x is equal to a over x. In this case, I'm going to give you the example y is equal to 1 over x. So the graph of uh, f of x is equal to 1 over x, or y is equal to 1 over x, is a hyperbola. And the hyperbola looks something like what I've drawn here in red. These two red lines, or figures, are going to be called branches. Okay, these are branches of the hyperbola. All right, and let's talk about the hyperbola. So a hyperbola is a symmetrical figure with two branches, as I mentioned. Here's one in the upper right corner, and here's another one in the lower left corner. The domain of the parent function is going to be all real numbers except for 0. So let's think about this. I have f of x or y is equal to 1 over x. I've said before that if the value of the denominator is going to be 0, then the graph is going to be, the value of y is going to be undefined. So we can't have a value of 0 here, otherwise y does not, there's no result or no result of y that makes sense. So the domain, all the inputs um, that we can possibly think of are going to be all real numbers except for the value of 0. Now the range is going to be the same, all real numbers except for 0, because if you think about it, if you can put in any value except for uh, 0 for x, you're going to get out some number, some value for y, any value for y, but it's not going to be 0. All right? So as x increases and gets larger and larger, y will get smaller and smaller. And as x decreases and gets smaller and smaller and closer to 0, y will increase, but y will never be 0. All right, let's talk about asymptotes. Asymptotes of a function are lines to which the hyperbola moves closer and closer to, but never touches. So in this case, I have two asymptotes, and those asymptotes are going to be the x and y axis. So in the graph, the hyperbola gets, the, one of the branches gets closer and closer to the y axis here, but it never quite touches the y axis. And then the other part of the branch gets closer and closer to the x axis, but it never touches the x axis. And again, it never touches x is equal to 0, because x can't be 0, uh, y will be undefined. And it never touches y is equal to 0, because x can never be 0, so y can never be 0. So remember, domain all real numbers except for 0, and the range all real numbers for, uh, except for 0. And what I'll call this parent function, or this basic function, y is equal to 1 over x. Now, I can translate this, and we'll talk about this in a couple minutes. I can move the parabola around so the asymptotes change, and then the domain and range will also change as well. All right, so we talked about asymptotes. We talked about what a hyperbola is. We talked about the domain and range. Let's move on. Before I move on, um, I wanted to talk about quadrants and an xy coordinate plane. Quadrants are there are four quadrants, so quad stands for four, and there are four parts or components to a coordinate plane. I have the upper right, I have the upper right corner, the upper left corner, bottom left, and bottom right. And we call in math the upper right the first quadrant, and then we move in a counterclockwise direction. Second quadrant is to the left, upper left corner, bottom left is the third quadrant, and the bottom right is the fourth quadrant. So I've just marked in the first quadrant. Both x and y are positive. In the second quadrant, x is minus or negative, and y is positive. Third quadrant, both x and y are negative. And the fourth quadrant, x is going to be positive and y is going to be negative. All right, so let's talk about uh, how to graph my function y is equal to some value, let's say a over x. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to identify the a value. So I have y is equal to a over x now becomes the function in question. So we write this here, y is equal to a over x. 
the first thing you want to do is identify the a value. In my example, I say y is equal to 8 over x, so the a value is going to be equal to 8. We're going to graph the hyperbola with the following guidelines. So if a is positive, then the branches are in the upper right and lower left. So I have upper right here and lower left corners. And that's of the asymptotes. If a is negative, then the branches are in the upper left and lower right. So if a is negative, I have branches in the upper left and also the lower right corners of the asymptotes. So the first thing you want to do, identify the a value, uh, determine the location of the, bra the branches, either upper right, lower left, or upper left and lower right. Next thing you want to do, and so in this my example, so I take my example, y is equal to 8 over x, a is positive, so the branches are in the upper right and lower left corners. Right now, you want to figure out um, how the proximity to the asymptotes relative to what we'll say was a parent function or the original function y is equal to 1 over x. So, if the absolute value of a is equal to 1, then we have the graph y is equal to 1 over x. It's going to be the same shape uh, as the parent function. If the absolute value of a is less than 1, shown in red, then the graph moves closer to the asymptotes relative to that parent function. Now, it's just a small change, but the graph does, in fact, move a little bit closer into those asymptotes. And then, if the absolute value of a is greater than 1, the graph moves just a little bit away from the asymptotes relative to that parent function. So again, the proxi proximity to the asymptotes a, in my example, is going to be greater than 1. So y is equal to 8 over x. 8 is greater than 1. The absolute value of 8 is greater than 1. So the graph moves away a little bit from the asymptotes relative to the parent function. All right, and then we test a set of points and we draw the hyperbola. Okay, so graphing translations of simple rational functions. We're going to say the standard form of a simple rational function is y is equal to a divided by x minus h plus k. And it's written a little unclearly in uh, here in typed value. So I wrote it here up in the upper right hand corner in blue. y is equal to a over x minus h plus k. All right, so what we can determine from these values are the asymptotes of the function. And the asymptotes of the function are x is equal to h, these are the lines, and y is equal to k. So when we draw the hyperbola, the first thing we want to do is we want to draw the asymptotes. And I can see here, based on the example, y is equal to negative 4 over x plus 2 minus 1, that my, uh, hor or my vertical asymptote is going to be x is equal to negative 2. So I draw my value x is equal to negative 2, my asymptote, and it's this blue line here. So here's my value or my line x is equal to negative 2. And I derive that because I know that the asymptote for the, ver the vertical asymptote is going to be x is equal to h. And h in this case is going to be negative 2. So x is equal to negative 2 is the line that represents the asymptote for this particular function. Now y is equal to k represents the horizontal asymptote, and y is equal to negative 1 based on the function that's given. So y is equal to negative 1 is going to be the horizontal asymptote. x is equal to negative 2, that's going to be the vertical asymptote. So I've drawn again my, uh, my asymptote y is equal to negative 1. Here's y is equal to negative 1. So now the asymptotes provide the structure, the framework for drawing the branches of the hyperbola. I take a look at my a value. It's a negative value, so it's going to be in the upper left and lower right corners. And then I know relative to the parent function, because the absolute value of a is greater than 1, that that parent function is going to move a little bit further away from the graph than would uh, the parent function just y is equal to um, 1 over x plus 2 minus 1. Okay, so we identify the location of the branches, we plot the points on both sides, x is equal to h and y is equal to k, and then we're done. All right, last part of this discussion, uh, graphing ra rational functions in the form ax plus b over cx plus d. It might look something like this, y is equal to 3 over x minus 3, or 3x plus 3 over x minus 3. And right, so we have a lot of numbers floating around this page, so let me erase them and let's talk about what's going on. So what we want to figure out 
given this particular example, y is equal to 3x plus 3 over x minus 3, are the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes. So let's talk about the vertical asymptote first. The vertical asymptote, remember, is the asymptote that relates to the denominator. And we said that the denominator cannot be 0. So in this case, we can't have x minus 3 be equal to 0. So x can never be 3. Right? So the vertical asymptote is going to be x is equal to 3. Now you can also remember the formula. The formula is just minus d over c. And in this case, it's going to be minus 3 um, over, well, minus minus 3 over 1. So 3 over 1 equals uh, 3. So again, minus d over c, right? So here's d, here's d um, over c, here is c here. So c is just a coefficient in front of 1. So I have a negative or minus minus 3 over 1 that gives me x is equal to 3. Right, the horizontal asymptote is just a over c, or just the coefficients in front of x and the denominator over the coefficient in front of x, I'm sorry, in the numerator, over the coefficient in front of the x in the denominator. So the coefficient in front of the x in the numerator is going to be 3, and the coefficient in, in front of x in front of the, uh, for the denominator is going to be 1. So my horizontal asymptote is also going to be 3, or y is equal to 3 in this case. 